Hi everyone, this is Ian from Anantec, and I'm going to talk to you about an idea I've had that Intel can do about its process node naming. Now, Intel's products have been on this sort of, you know, 14, 14 plus, 14 plus plus, 10, 10 plus process naming, and it's all got a bit squirrely, and it's, you know, doesn't help when TSMC and Samsung are doing you know 16 nanometer, then 10 nanometer, then 7 nanometer, all while Intel is doing 14 plus plus. Now we have to realize that these names don't actually mean much in the context of what exactly the physical aspect of the design and what is happening within a design. These are just nouns. These are just names that they're attaching to the process in order to show that one process is better than the other. The thing is that works within the same company but when you're comparing uh, one company to another then you have issues. So historically it's been considered that Intel's 14 nanometer process is similar to TSMC's 10 nanometer process in terms of density and performance and that sort of thing. So it generates a bunch of confusion for people not knowing what's going on and I've got an idea that might help Intel, you know, actually be better represented in terms of what its manufacturing processes uh, can actually be doing. Now, it should be stated that um, I speak to companies about this. I interviewed uh, the then CTO Gary Patton at uh, Global Foundries before they decided to cancel their seven nanometer projects, and I said, you know, do you care what these processes are named? And ultimately, his answer was no. Um, because the customers that he deals with directly, they don't care what the name is because they can see what the performance of the process is through the tools that they're provided by Global Foundries and all the EDA tools that come out you know, through Cadence and iMech and what have you. Um, so this is purely sort of a marketing play. All these, you know, um, all these 14, 14 plus, 10, 7, this is marketing. And this is an idea that maybe some of you probably won't like, um, you know, because it's artificially shifting some goalposts and whatnot. Um, but I think after, you know, perhaps an initial backlash, perhaps, um, it might help out a company like Intel in the long run, especially as it might decide to improve its foundry capabilities later on in its life cycle. Now, let's start with exactly what we're dealing with here. This is, so this is Intel as uh, they specified in their 2013 plan. So we have 14 nanometer here at 2014 and 2015, moving into 10 nanometer 2016, 2017. Now, Intel repeatedly stated that they wanted to ship a form of 10 nanometer product, and they actually did in December 2017, albeit you know limited in scope, and that was called Canon Lake. Um, but ultimately from 2013 looking forward, this was their Intel's next four years. They were moving from 14 nanometer to 10 nanometer with you know, increasing density scaling, features like self-aligned quad patterning, contact over active gate, cobalt interconnect, and looking into you know, Foveros and EBIB and all the things they've learned to expect from Intel. Now what happened is 10 nanometer because of various failings in its design, um, has been pushed out to 2019. Um, that's this year, and we're expecting 10 nanometer parts by the end of 2019 to come into a wider circulation than Canon Lake was. Now, in order to fill up the gap, Intel has developed these you know, new processes of 14 plus and 14 plus plus, um, which are refinements on the 14 nanometer design. These are what we call BKM updates. Uh, so this is just implementation of uh, new design rules to help density or voltage or frequency um, but it's not a complete process change you can just you can use the same design perhaps with very minor tweaks it's not a full front end line middle end line back end line change um, or at least one subset of those that is typically seen going from one major process node to another this is an optimization of the process node which is kind of where why Intel went into that process architecture optimization route, which they've since abandoned again. Um, but th so this was presented um, by Intel recently at their investor day, and the idea is now is is when they have these major process nodes, this 14, this 10, this 7, they're going to be building in these BKM updates into their strategy, into their product strategy. 
So 40 nanometer had a plus and a plus plus. 10 nanometer will now have a plus and a plus plus. 7 nanometer, which is you know planned for 2021, is going to have a plus and a plus plus. Um, now the amusing thing is, if you know anything about coding, plus plus is usually something you do to a variable to add one. So if to be you know somewhat facetious here you could say well it's 14 14 plus 15 10 10 plus 11 so that kind of doesn't really work intel kind of fell into this plus naming scheme um i think without actually thinking about it properly because they probably only expected one ver one more version of 14 that for sort of 14 plus they didn't expect a second version of 14 this 14 plus plus um and the, the the thing is these these updates have historically happened for Pretty much every process node, you know, going back uh, 22 nanometer, 32 nanometer, 45 nanometer, 65 nanometer, 90 nanometer. These updates used to be sort of run-of-the-mill things, and they still are. It's just previously they weren't advertised. It was just you know they would say to their chips, oh hey, you can now do it at you know 50 millivolts less and get the same frequency. Great, fantastic. Or you can change you know the development slightly and you get an extra one to 200 megahertz. Or this be this update is better for analog circuitry or this update is better for graphics the you know it would just be rolled under this under the same name and nothing would be made of it but now it's come to a point where all of these things are fundamental parts of the marketing strategy with these companies especially with the foundries especially with TSMC especially with Samsung um, and global foundries uh, less so with Intel though supposedly Intel still does have foundry business um, so it is at least relevant somewhat there. Now I want to go into what my idea is and use a bit of um, Samsung's roadmap as an example. Now so this is Samsung's roadmap and along the top they have their major process nodes. They have a 14, a 10, a 7 and after that a 3 and there may be a 5, you know, there, there is a 5 but it's 5 is a derivative not an actual, you know, full brand new process node. And what they've done here is um, they've separated their updates, the evolution of the processes into optimizations and adaptations. Um, so optimizations being those sort of, you know, BKM updates um, and the, the plugin modules might be, you know, more improved libraries to either go for efficiency, ultra low power or ultra high power um, or just changes to the back end of line production process to help drive um, either performance, power, voltage, and whatnot. So we see 14 on the top left, that's the LPE process. Um, an optimization there led to, led to the LPP process, and then you know advanced modules, LPC, LPU, fi until finally it turned, they've changed the name into 11 LPP. So this is meant to be sort of like the low power process of 11 nanometer. Now, alongside that, the major process node is changed to 10. When they've gone 10, they've gone with an LPE process to begin with, and then down into the LPP. And then as they've moved beyond, they're saying, well, okay, we've done a minor update to our 10 LPP and we're calling it eight. And then we have an eight LPP and an eight LPU, um, and then further enhancing beyond there. If we go to the seven nanometer, the naming um, changes even more. We go from seven to six to five to four. Every update, every process that a foundry um, customer can buy literally decreases number by one so they know they're getting something better um, and then it with uh, three nanometer it goes you know three GAE to three GAP um, and that's you know further out down the line but the, the the process here is simple you you're changing you're, you're you're changing the way that the process node is being optimized and you decrease the number by one now what if Intel did that? We would have four, 14 would be 14, 14 plus would be 13, 14 plus plus would be 12, and then the next major process node would be 10, then we have 9, then we have 8, then the major process node next would be 7, then we have 6, and then we might have you know several versions of 5. The fact that Intel is stuck on this plus is perhaps to the detriment of how they're presenting their process node technology. Now Samsung kind of have it right. They're mixing you know different elements of the process um, with the numbers. 
when a Samsung or a TSMC has to do a process node, they have to do a process node aimed at efficiency, one at, well, or at least one variant of aimed at efficiency, one variant with libraries aimed at um, high performance, one you know for high density SRAMs, that sort of thing. Intel doesn't necessarily promote how they're doing that. I mean, we know for 10 nanometer that there is that there are three versions of the libraries: one for ultra high performance, one for high density, and one for ultra high density. Um, but they don't separate these out into specifics. Now, to a certain extent, you can mix and match as well within the same production design. Um, but this is this is the problem Intel has here. It hasn't accurately suggested how its process node technology evolves beyond this sort of plus and the plus plus. All the while, its competitors are reducing numbers. You know, not only with major updates but also with minor ones. Um, and as a re result, we've got this situation where Intel's 10 nanometer is late compared to TSMC's 7 nanometer. Now, if you don't know what those numbers mean, you you might say, well, is 10 better than 7? Is 7 better than 10? And somebody might turn around and say, well, lower number is better because that means it's smaller. So you're instantly going to think 7 is better than 10, even though you know they're approximately the same in density. Um, and you know, seven's been out for a while, and ten is in the process of being launched. So, again, this is to the detriment of Intel's you know marketing strategy. And I think that you know, with a slight minor change, yes, it's necessarily perhaps you know just an arbitrary change of a lot of nouns, um, but it might help the company in actually promoting um, how they're doing their product portfolio moving forward. Um, it would also help us from a press perspective. You know, instead of asking, is it 14 plus? Is it 14 plus plus? Is it 14 family? Is it 10 family? Is it 10? Is it 10 plus? They can just say, oh, it's 12, or oh, it's nine, and we'd instantly know, and there'd be you know no back and forth. And you know, give it a few months after that initial, you know, why have you changed it? You're just trying to, you know, compete on marketing. I think it's a fair change. I think it simplifies things um, to a certain perspective. And of course, we can always get graphs like this on investor days, on, on tech days, where we can actually explain what each of the numbers mean and what's going on and how features like EUV are coming along. I mean, so that's just an idea I've had. You know, goodness knows if Intel's going to take it up and goodness knows if anybody actually agrees with me. Um, but I think it's a rel relatively simple change that can help. Now, you know, TSMC and AMD is already using TSMC and NVIDIA is already using TSMC and, you know, they've had the advantages of this for a while and it's helped them. <laughs> There's no doubt about that, you know, and fair play to them. It's It's been a useful marketing strategy and big props to AMD for taking advantage of 7 nanometer with 7.7 7 on Zen 2, um, which in some countries is going to be launched at 7 p.m. or 7 a.m. and you know, prices for certain products may end up with a 7 in them and they're able to fully leverage what the foundry is offering to them. Um, so I've got no qualms with that because that is, to a certain extent, really good marketing. Um, I mean, so that's my thoughts. You know, leave a comment or something down below um, to let me know what you think and I'll speak to you next time.